Hi, Mark Gilbert here. Thanks for clicking in on this video. I appreciate you viewing it, and I hope you get something out of it. Today's topic is perfection is the enemy of the good. What do we mean by that? Well, in a nutshell, it simply means that sometimes we can delay taking action, which would be good, because of some procrastination attempts out of a desired state for some magical perfection we think is going to come about. You know, I first heard this phrase uh, a number of years ago, boy, almost 20 years ago now. Uh, I was an executive with uh, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services in my prior life, and I was involved in the uh, rollout of the Medicare Part D, which is the drug benefit. Uh, I was involved in the rollout of that nationwide uh, and included a number of trips back to Washington, D.C., to meet with others as we were planning all of the things that needed to be done to roll out this new drug benefit. Suffice to say that it included a lot of p moving pieces that were things that the agency had never done before, and there were so many parts to it that needed to be done. But everything we looked at, it was real easy to say, okay, I see where we need to go, and this needs to be done, and we would get close to it, but there would be always something more we could do, always something more we could improve upon. And at a certain point, one of the key leaders in a meeting that I was in in D.C., you know, in frustration said, you know, perfection is the enemy of the good, i.e., we got to make a decision and move on and get things done uh, so that we get this benefit, this uh, prescription drug benefit uh, instituted, because if we don't and we are continuously trying to push towards perfection and everything we do, we'll never actually get anything of it accomplished. It was a key point and one I took with me uh, for many years. I know I've written some blogs about this on my website, uh, Conscious Bridge. And um, in fact, there's probably a link I'll put on the video for, for the link to that. But the idea is has always been key to me that we can hide behind a desire for perfection to the degree that we paralyze ourselves and not get anything done. And this can show up in a number of ways. I've seen people who uh, let's say they want to write a book, and they'd say, well, you know, uh, I don't know enough yet. i got to do more research. i got to watch another video. i got to read three more books. i got to gather some more notes. There's always more tasks that need to be done before they sit down and actually start doing the writing. And uh, so that's one way in which perfection keeps them from doing the good of writing the book. I've seen other people who say, you know, I want to change careers and jobs, uh, but such and such has to happen. I've got to be making enough money. I've got to have saved up enough money. I've got to wait till the kids are, are grown. I've got to have this expense paid off. Or There's always something that has to be done before they can take the step that they're desiring to take. Again, seeing some sort of perfection playing out and wanting that to occur before the good occurs of the change. Same with relationships. You may be stuck in a bad relationship and say, well, I don't, I don't want to change things because until these other things occur. Uh, it's all excuses. It's interesting it showed up another way the other day. Uh, somebody said the words to me that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And I thought, well, that sounds good. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. The thinking being that if you're going to be presenting something to someone, you want it to be so good that they form a positive first impression over you because you know, are not going to get an, a, another chance to make a first impression. But let's look at the flip side of that for a moment. You could basically say, my first impression has not been practiced so well and so fine-tuned in, ter in terms of my honing of it uh, that I'm not ready to roll it out yet. Hence, I'll never even make a first impression because I'm not going to give you my first impression because my first impression isn't good enough yet. So can you relate to any of this? Is there somewhere in your life where you're avoiding taking action because you're ensuring that all your ducks are lined up in a row? And why are you doing that? You know, typically when we avoid taking the next step that we know is necessary and use some sort of justification of having some other things done before we can take that step, the reason we're procrastinating usually gets back to fear. We're afraid of something. We're afraid of failure. We're afraid of what other people are going to think of us. 
we're afraid we won't be seen as good enough or we won't be good enough. No matter how you slice it or dice it, it all comes down to some kind of fear. And that fear usually relates back to some sort of learned response that basically has concern about the thoughts of others. What are they, the nebulous they, out there going to think if we don't do something perfect or just right? All too often, so many of us are so concerned about the good opinions of others that it keeps us from taking the necessary steps in our life. So how do we solve that? How do we fix it? Well, the first step is awareness. The first step is to take a look at your life and say, where am I procrastinating and not taking action because of some fears that I've got? And I'm using excuses, such as the perfection that I so desire, as an excuse to keep me to taking that good first step. What am I afraid of? The awareness of that fear then allows you to change it. You can hold it up in your hand and say, is this real? Is this something I can re I really need to be afraid of? And in more cases than not, it's imagined. You imagine what people are going to think. You imagine negative consequences or experiences coming out of you taking the actions. That's not to say that you might suffer from some failure or setback but always keep in mind that failures and setbacks are opportunities for learning, taking corrective action, and growing. If you never take the first step, then you're never going to get further on the journey. Sometimes it's generally better to fail than to stand still. Because at least in failure, you learned and you got the impetus to pull yourself up and keep going. And you'll learn that what you imagined was going to be the negative consequences generally are never as bad as what we imagine. So you start with the awareness and then set the intention to move forward. Find that area in your life where you want to grow and move forward. Write yourself affirmations. Use affirmative prayer. See my videos on those topics. But set in motion the intention and the desire to move in that direction and follow your affirmations and affirmative prayer with proper right action. Perfection can stall us. Let's do the good. Let's do it today. What do you think? I thank you for watching this and I would appreciate your feedback. Drop me a comment, drop me an email, let me know what you're thinking, and give me topics for other videos you'd like me to do. Till next time. Hey, one more quick thing. I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. The link is down there on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Also, there's a related video you might want to watch. It's right next to my face. And if you like this video, be sure to click like and leave me a comment on YouTube. Thanks.